My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. Don't worry, just keep the thing sound. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. God bless you. I want to quickly appreciate the leadership of the fellowship for having me here tonight. Just help her. Okay, let her be. Let her be. Allow, just allow her. The president of the FCS. The entire leadership. Thank you very much for having us tonight. I speak as a representative of a system. My father in the Lord, Apostle Warame Osai, was supposed to be here tonight. But he is unavoidably absent. And he's asked me to come standing for him. I see our fathers, our mothers. Can you please clap hands for Jesus for having them? Their presence gives credibility to what we do. Because everything we see in God today is a function of their labors, what they have been able to track and hand over to us is what we bask in. And we are grateful to God to have their continuous support. Tonight I'll be sharing with us very briefly. We have just an hour left. And it's my prayer that the Lord will be communicating his heartbeat, his body, even beyond my utterance tonight. You see, the last day gospel is not necessarily carried on the wing of preachers and teachers. In order to effectively communicate the gospel in this day and time, you have to be a proclaimer. There's a difference between a teacher, a preacher, and a proclaimer. By reason of the office of a teacher, he sustains capacity to unveil scriptures. He expounds truth and he communicates emphasis, articulate in order to provide a balance for truth and for verity. And it's on the strength of the teaching or the dispensation of the office of a teacher that truth can be preserved and the heritage of God can be transferred from one generation to another without compromising the integrity and the veracity of the word of God. A preacher sustains the capacity to exhort. So as he expounds the word of God, most times he brings exhortation and you are enlightened, you are excited, you are lifted up. But it's a bit different from a proclaimer. Yes, a preacher may have some of the components of a proclaimer's operation, but it's a bit different. A proclaimer is not necessarily a teacher. It's not necessarily a preacher. It's a one that is able to capture burdens from Zion and to transfer the same to the heart of men. The job of a proclaimer is to stand as a conduit from heaven to earth so that that which is sustained on the heart of God can be communicated to the heart of men. He may not be able to give you an articulate exegesis of doctrine, but when he speaks, it is what is in the heart of God by time that transfers. So a proclaimer may come for a meeting and you may not really remember what you have learned, but you will live with a body. If what is in the heart of God by time is the body of prayer, you may not understand carefully the doctrine of prayer, but you will be imparted the ability to pray and you will discover that you will leave the, the meeting in session. Because his job is to communicate to you the emphasis, the present revelation position of the spirit. Not too many things can be taught. Doctrine is just a fragment of truth. Many things are communicated as, as a body of spirits. And it is the job of a proclaimer to communicate to you the heart of God, the body, 
in the heart of the Father for a time. Sometimes come for a meeting, and what God wants to do is to create a summon so that people can come into regions of encounter, and on the strength of that encounter, they will dis- discover their destinies and begin to walk in it. So his teaching that day may not be relevant to you, but what will happen to you is that because he was able to open the vast conduit of heaven. Many people will leave the meeting and begin to have strange encounters. And on the strength of those encounters, they will begin to have destination in God. God raises proclaimers. Because the last day gospel is a gospel of great contention. You don't minister just to men, but to minister to spirits. You don't only communicate truth, you transfer spirits. So that people come to a place where they are invigorated on their inner man. You will discover that many persons here understand many many rules, many doctrines, many truths, but they don't walk in it. Our campuses today is a reflection of different dimensions of Hades. Sometimes you go to a campus, it's just a screen displaying the characteristic of immoral spirits. Meanwhile, there are more than 40 fellowships in that campus. So you need to understand that what they need is not understanding of the doctrine of righteousness. What they need is an impartation of the spirit of righteousness. And that is why for God to raise the proclaimer, first of all, he carries him through a process, a process of dealing, until he is able to sustain the character of the spirit that he represents. Else we become very proud and bogus people because we run around with different kinds of revelation. Have you been on Facebook in recent times? Many young people online with different kinds of revelation, discrediting the fathers, condemning their efforts because they know things that are not proven. When you see people bogus with pride, then you understand that they have read about things but they have not touched the texture of the spirits that are the custodians of those truths they communicate. That is why we do so much talking but there is no transformation on the landscape. The Holy Ghost is going to be activating a lot of you this evening. Amen. Oh, man. Most of you will be quickened this evening. Amen. Your lives will be implicated for something you never bargained for. Amen. You will leave the meeting and you will discover that your, pra- your, your appetites will change. Amen. The things that form the bedrock of your desires will change. Amen. Some of you do some things this evening after this meeting you will discover you will not be able to do them again because a strange thing will happen with you you know Saul was looking for his father's missing asses he thought he was on a mission to discover asses that were missing he never knew that he was on a journey to kingship and when someone looked at him he said is it not because the Lord has anointed you king captain over his people he said as you leave me you will find the company of prophets and it's your heart another spirit will be given to you and you will be changed into another man. Many people are about to be changed to another man tonight. It's not going to be teaching as usual. I came with a spirit of revival. You reign God You are mighty on your throne. Just in case you are not ready. Talk to God one more time. Tell him I'm ready. Tell him, use me. You use me. Use me. You are your prime. There are many spirits contending for your prime, contending for your attention. There are many spirits. There are many spirits that have seen your star in the spirit. They know that in the day of your rising, cities will be taken for God. They have peeped through the vistas of heaven. You may be seeing yourself as a poor today that have no future. Even your school fees is by mercy that is paid. But in the realm of the spirit, your star shines like a bright light. And this spirit, they have capacity through astrology to look into your star. Jesus was only a baby of few days old, but they knew that he was king. Can you tell the Lord I'm ready tonight? Tell the Lord you are ready. What we need tonight are ready hearts. They are ready hearts. Heaven is ready to move. But we need ready hearts. Ready hearts. Most of you are weak. There is no energy in your spirit, man. Thank God you are ready. That's all he needs. You reign. You reign. God. You are mighty on your own. You reign.
You see the theme of your conference is bearing witness, testimony to his grace. But before you are able to bring witness for Jesus, you need to understand the plethora of operations that are taking place in your landscape. You need to understand the business of spirits that is going on within the terrain before you are able to provide accurate witness. Because witnessing is not just to stand and talk about Jesus. There are many people that entered into territories to talk about Jesus and they were cut off. Because they don't understand the laws that govern the spirit realm. Witnessing is not just to stand and say bogus things about God. If you don't understand the mystery by which territories are built, the mystery by which civilizations are constructed in the spirit, you will not be a very good witness. Before I delve into the topic, I will need to show you how spiritual cities are built. So that you have an idea, the market that you have been summoned to provide witness. Else you will find yourself in the jungle and you will think you are talking in the palace. And you will make statements that will malign your destiny. You know, most times people don't understand the chemistry, the organic dimension of spirit life. So we think it's about talking and getting. It's deeper. I want to show you a few things tonight. How spiritual cities are constructed. How spiritual cities are built. So that you understand the dedicated nature of assignment you have been summoned into. The assignment is not for those who read the Bible and can quote it. The assignment is not for those who are orators and can speak in the public. The assignment is not for both people that grew up in church and understand church language. The assignment is for people that have been weaned by God and raised in the crucible of spirit life. And it's on the strength of who they are in God that they have been sent out. If God have not worked on you, you cannot build for him. If God have not built himself into you, you cannot represent him. So witnessing does not begin with what you know to say. Witnessing begins from who you are in God. And I need to show you that there are spirits involved in this business. Because if you don't understand it's the business of spirits, you may take it for granted. You know, you may be going for a meeting. You can't really stand up and use your concordance and take two or three scriptures that speak up the topic. And because you are able to memorize those scriptures, you think you have a message. You don't know that you are speaking in a pool of spirits. It's a way these things are designed. The things that happen in your campus, the things that happen in this territory, they are not occurrences that are coincidences. They are carefully designed. Where to launch strategic intelligence from the demonic realm. If you are bringing witness, you are going to contend against darkness. That is why you must be a light first before you can give it the dimensions of God. We have a church today where most of the people that are on the microphone, their life is not accurate with God. But when Luke was giving a treatise about the workings and the ministry of Jesus Christ, he said of all that Jesus both began to do, he had a life in what he was communicating. He was first of all built, he was his lifestyle before he spoke out. Because he knew that what was due, the dealings that he was involved in, was a reality that was in the pool of spirits. You need to understand that spirits are involved. Tell your neighbor, say spirits are involved. It's not a business of men. It's not a business of men. It's a business of spirits. You have been called to represent one spirit among many million spirits. So first of all, you must be accurate with the spirit you are representing before you can begin to express to him. Jesus will not come to this campus. If you are praying for Jesus to come down, not because he's already here. His spirit has been separated into every one of us so that we can represent him. But the degree to which we represent him is the degree to which we become one with him. There are many people struggling with secret sins. They come to church every morning. But they don't understand why the walls of the preacher cannot travel through their soul to touch the fabric of their reality. Many people crying every day, God have mercy. They don't understand why their life seems to be manipulated from up. They make decisions, they make resolutions, but every day they go out, they discover they are puppets in the hands of the devil. There is no sufficient witness on the landscape. It's a business of spirits. First of all, what you need to understand is that the world is dwelling in darkness. I will just talk to you about three things. 
only three things, then we'll begin to pray. The world is dwelling in darkness. And you need to understand what darkness is. And then secondly, I will tell you how darkness is able to find expression on this realm. And then when you know how darkness enters this realm, then I will tell you what we'll begin to do to contend with darkness. If you don't deal with darkness, you cannot do business with the souls of men. You know, Jesus, before he sent the disciples out, he said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. That was why the apostles had results. He first of all contended with darkness. He defeated darkness before he was able to secure the authority over the realm. The reason the people went out and had results was because he saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. If you cannot challenge darkness, you don't have power to regulate the souls of men. Because men are bound by darkness. First question is, what is darkness? Because if you don't know what darkness is, you may mistake it. Hey. Can we pray in tongues for one minute? 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 Most of you are still on the floor. What I'm saying will not profit you much. It will not profit you. You are still on the floor. Can you pray in tongues for one minute? I'm sensing your energy level with the spirit. I know where you are now. Shaka bata para baba baska. Reina nata pariko parianda tala. Perianda pape kasuzwa. Pero madina katali kasuta tala. Aleta harwanda taliato. Bela fantas ki parada babelia. Ina nana matoria. Uto sakatoria. Hamata, hamata, hamata. Perianda parianda setoria la maragina paradendo. Listen If you study the Bible carefully You will discover that Amongst many other operations of darkness There are three major spheres of darkness The first sphere of darkness That you find in scripture Is that darkness is a civilization Darkness is a civilization you may find yourself on campus and you discover everybody is dressing half naked. And you think it's a trend. No, it's not a trend. It's a revelation of an operation from the path of hell. And if you are not careful to realize that that is an operation of darkness, by the time you get to, you may come in hundred level and you say, why are all the girls like this? Why are they dressing like this? You think you hate it. But when you are there for some time, at 200 level, you discover all your skirts will be substituted for tight trousers. After some time, if you see your picture in 300 level, and sorry, in NC3, and you compare it with your picture in NC1, you will discover you have become a different person. You know why? You came into a civilization you were not aware. The tax is a civilization. You can be in Egypt for a long time. And then you discover that you fall in love with cucumber and garlic. And even when God says, Come to the land flowing with milk and honey, you will prefer cucumber to milk and honey. You know what? You came into a civilization. You were not aware. You notice when Cain, when Cain first of all deviated from God, he didn't understand that he was on a journey to build a city. He thought he was just jealous. How can God accept my brother's offering? And not accept mine. And then somehow he was instructed carefully by demonic intelligence. And he carried his brother to the field and slew him. And when the monarch of Zion showed up, he said, Cain, Cain, where is thy brother? And Cain said, Am I my brother's keeper? Do you know why Cain spoke like that? Cain spoke like that because he knows the presence of God. You know, they were cast out of the garden of Eden, but they were not cast out of Eden. Eden is the atmosphere of heaven. It's a doorway from heaven to earth. So they were still living within the perimeter of Eden. They were sent out of the garden because God didn't want them to have access to the tree of life. Because if they have access to the tree of life, they will be eternally condemned. The same way Lucifer is condemned and he cannot be redeemed. You know why? Because he was condemned in an eternal state. And when you are condemned in an eternal state, there is no redemption for you. 
It was a spirit living in eternity. And eternity is a realm of perpetual continuum. So there is no salvation for one who falls when he has entered or has subscribed to life in eternity. So God expelled them from the garden so that they will not eat of the tree of life and be eternally condemned. But they were still in Eden, so they were used to God. That was why he spoke to God like a friend. You know, uh, if you are not used to God and God speaks to you from heaven, you will faint. If you have had an encounter before, you will, you will collapse as if you want to die. But the guy said, am I my brother's keeper? Because he knew God. He hears God. They speak with God. In fact, it was by knowing that they realized they were supposed to provide sacrifice to God. They knew they could interpret spiritual language. They understood bodies. They understood summons. All of these things are organic realities. They knew it. But they did not know that God had many dimensions. Because at this time, only two dimensions of God were revealed. God was only revealed as Elohim and Jehovah Elohim. And as Elohim, God was only revealed as the Almighty. In Elohim, he displayed the highest kind of power. The one that gives him the authority to create all things from nothing. So Elohim is the revelation of the almightiness of God. So they knew that God was the most powerful. And so what? When it fell, Jehovah Elohim showed up and drove them out of the garden. So they knew that God was righteous. But what does it take? God is righteous. That's fine. Let him enjoy his righteousness. What he didn't know that God was also a judge. So when he killed his brother, the one that came to talk to him was the judge of all. And as a judge, God will ensure that the justice system of heaven plays out in all of the realms that he created. So he said, where is thy brother? He said, am I my brother's keeper? Ah! And the judge began to tell him the verdict that was passed from the courts of heaven. He said, the blood of thy brother is crying to me from the ground. That was the first time he understood that there are many things that have utterance. It's not only your mouth that speaks in the spirit realm. There are many things that have a vocabulary in the spirit realm. One of the things that speaks audibly in the spirit is if you read the scriptures, you discover that there are nine voices that speak in the courts of heaven. One of them is the utterance of the blood. And he said, the voice of thy brother's blood is crying from the ground. Now the judge has come to prosecute judgment. And he said, you shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the face of the earth. I'm not talking about the judgment, but what I want to show you is that darkness is a civilization. The moment God judge came, the first thing that happened to him was that you could see deceives, sin beguiles. He was growing in the in the civilization, he was not aware. And then this time around, he, he decided to run away from Eden. And then he went to build a city in north, which was in the east side of Eden. So he was on his own that he ran away from the presence. Did you notice that every time that you fall into sin, it becomes difficult to access the presence of God. It's not like God is pursuing you, but on your own you will run away. It becomes difficult to go for the prayer meeting. It becomes difficult to read the Bible. That is because a civilization is beginning to corrupt your soul. And if you don't understand that it is a demonic intelligence trying to weave itself into your soul and to make you a servant forever, you will not rise to fight it in righteousness. The guy ran away from the presence of God and he went and built a city. And he dedicated the city to his son. That is where idolatry began from. Now he did not bring his offering before God anymore. Now you could ded dedicate things to other beings apart from God. The Bible told us how that he began to raise children. And the civilization was evolving. It was evolving. It was evolving. It was evolving. A point came. One married two wives. A point came. Mahuja eh, went and created musical instruments. Because at this time, the sound that they heard was in their spirit man. It's the song of songs. Playing in their spirit so that they can connect to God in experiential dimension. Hope you know that sound is a vehicle of transport in the spirit. So the sound you hear in your spirit is what brings you into the spirit God. But now they have decided to create another kind of sound that is apart from God. So that the vacuum in their soul that only God can feel is now replaced by another kind of technology. What they are doing is that they are trying to come isolate themselves from God and a point comes when it is possible for you to live as if God does not exist at that point you have entered into the full scale of the civilization of darkness when was the last time you took a decision because God said my son do this you now walk by assumptions 
you walk by your intelligence. Meanwhile, the Bible said, it is not given to man that walketh to order his steps. But when you walk in the civilization of darkness, you become a God over your life. You may not be looking in sin, but God is no longer your philosophy. God is no longer your ideology. You can quote many things you know, but not God. If you are there, know that the valve of your soul is already weak. Demons are already controlling your life and your destiny. Darkness is a civilization. Darkness is also a system. It's a system that works other entities into you. A point come, you discover that things work in your inside that you can't control. Rather, they control you. Have you seen people that are so full of the spirit of rage? If you just say, hey, the next thing they have, a slap has gone in your direction. And then they go and cry. They say, this anger, I don't know what to do about it. You are under the influence of a system. Something else is working on your inside apart from God. Have you seen people that are under the spirit of lust? The guy comes back and he thinks about this gear. He rolls on the bed and then by 10 a.m. he stands up. He's going 10 kilometers to see the gear. Because that thing working in him is an operating system. He controls his life. There are some that are bound by the spirit of pornography. Even if they come back and they are tired, dead tired, they must watch it. It's a system. And what it does is that he hides you and you cannot receive help because it is working intrinsically on your inside. Darkness is a government. When darkness becomes a government, then you come under oppression. That's when you discover that your life is beginning to be attacked. Things happen around you that you don't know the cause. If you check your life carefully, you'll discover that one of the three things I've called is working in you. Yes. One, at least one. You know what? The earth is in the, in, is in the habitation of cruelty. And what you don't know is that darkness has no power in and around you except you give it space the bible said in ephesians 4 27 he said giving no place to the devil listen the reason i'm taking this ride is to show you what you must read yourself of if you must represent god you cannot be under a government and fight it the fact jesus said if a house is divided against itself it can't stand it's a leader is satan divided against itself that's why before God walks with a man, what he does is that he takes him away from that civilization of darkness. The Bible said, John, in Luke 1 80, was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth unto Israel. If, if he is discipled by the system he lives in, he cannot correct it. Most of us say we are pastors. They call us apostles, they call us prophets. And if we check our life carefully, the same things the unbelievers are doing are the same things we are doing. The only difference is that we hear messages. So on Friday during the fellowship, we stand on the altar and then we are bringing Rema. We are bringing Rema. Your Rema will not be powerful until God is powerful in your life. God is weak in our lives. That is why there is much talking, but nothing happens. We are in a battle with spirits. Spirits are masters of building cities. It is their description. It is their nature and their essence to build cities. When you bring yourself under the influence of a spirit, he is not only interested in colonizing you, he wants to use you as a gate to take over your family and your territory. He says, giving no place to the devil. A place is not a space. No. A place is a window of possibility bequeathed you by God in which there is a possibility of expression. It could be an authority. It could be an anointing. It could be an ordination. It could be your heart. But it is not a space. It is a possibility window that God bequeaths you by His sovereign power. And within that possibility range, a lot of things are hap can happen. So if you allow the devil space into your authority, through that your authority, he will rule to the degree that that authority covers. The reason most 
people are weak today is because the people that have authority over them fell. The Bible said concerning Jesus, He said, I sanctify myself so that they too might be sanctified. Because of His authority, everybody that is under Him, anything that happens to Him can impact them. So Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you, that he may sit you like wheat, but I have prayed for you. He said, and when thou art recovered, strengthen thy brethren. What did you read there? Because Peter is becoming weak, the brethren are becoming weak. By reason of his leadership, he has authority over them. So what happens to Peter can impact on their fire fellowship. That is called a place. The devil will fight and look for it. You were born guilty, not because you did anything wrong, but because by Adamic authority, you are included in him. So when Satan was gunning for Adam, he had you in mind. Because a place is a window of authority. It could be an anointing. As you are, the sphere of the anointing, the degree to which your anointing can impact your world is a place. And if the devil gets you and corrupts your anointing, everybody that you are anointing will impact. It will have a negative effect on that person. Did you study about Balaam? Balaam thought he was greedy for money. But the time came, the Bible said, it was an error. Revelation 2.14 The Bible said it was a way So a lot of people began to walk in it Why? It was a place So when the devil is tempting you Don't think it's about what you like and don't like The being is seeing something you can't see He's seeing your authority He's seeing your ordination He's seeing your anointing He wants to colonize you and your world So that everything your influence can impart It will become a window for him to find expression Peter said the judgment on us who are leaders will be more severe. They do not read. Paul said, as much as we have loved you, we have not only imparted unto you the gospel, he said, but the very substance of our soul. A man who is under you, when you talk, you impact that person your personality. So when you are corrupt, you transmit corruption. The reason our witness is not effective is because most of us are puppets in the hands of the devil. If you notice that you have fallen, stop preaching. If you notice you have fallen, stop discipling. Because what you are doing is that you are transmitting a corrupt fountain. Go and stay with God until you are purified. It doesn't matter what they call you. Because he said, if you make one of these little ones fall into sin, he said, it will be better a grinding stone is tied to you and you are cast into the sea. It's bad enough. That you have become a slave of the devil. But never allow yourself to become a conduit pipe that conducts and transmits possibilities from Hades. That's what the devil is interested in. Because, because of your desire, you are the only being that has the right, the legality and the capacity to bring possibilities from the spiritual into the natural. There is no other entity called creator that has that capacity. Only that capacity. So if spirit that want to find the expression in the earth realm, he will need the gate of man. He say, you giving no place to the devil. It's called the technology of spirit civilization. How spirits infiltrate the earth realm. I want to give you the big one now. I just hope people can receive this one. You were created with a vacuum. You cannot but trap and give expression to spirits, whether you like it or not. That is how you were designed. When the principalities fell from heaven, they didn't have regions of expression anymore. Because the Bible said there was no place found for Lucifer in heaven. The only way he could have possibility of, of was in the earth realm. So he came to beguile the man. And not until today, that strategy is still ongoing. Let me show you how demons enter into territories and they rule it. I don't have time. That's why I'm not going through the scriptures. If I carry the Bible now, I begin to open and read. We'll have too many lights and we can't move forward. You will not know how important your service to God is. 
you will not have an idea. A lot of things cannot happen in this world until we rise. Men are not the same. We are different. All of us were saved by the same economy in salvation. But when we are saved, we are not the same. Never be deceived. Men are different. Find your place and walk in it. And remember, a lot depends on your discovery of who you are in God. In the Old Testament, God told, began to give Moses wisdom. You know, part of the intelligence of priesthood is to give expression to possibilities in the spirit in the natural. That's part of the intelligence of priesthood. You remember when the three mighty men of David went to get him water from the wells of the Philistines? Yes, when they brought the water to him, he held it and he said, this is no longer water, this is blood. That is the intelligence of priesthood. It is in priesthood that you discover the value of things in the spirit when you see them in the natural. And on the strength of that intelligence, you also realize that men are not equal. Men are different. One of the things that distinguish men is what we call ordination. Ordination is who God created you to be and the assignment he created you to fulfill. So if we are in a church setting, for example, some may be in the ministry of helps. Why some will be in the fivefold? By ordination, those in the fivefold are superior to those in the ministry of helps because they have been called to disciple others and bring them to maturity. So there is a privilege they enjoy by, by reason of that position of favor they occupy with God. But ordination is not the only thing that distinguishes men. The extent to which you give expression to the grace of God on your life also distinguishes you. You can be an apostle, I may be a helper. And on the strength of his ordination, he's supposed to reach the whole world. But me, I'm supposed to be a helper in this cathedral. And I may de deliver my services up to 90%. Him who is an apostle to the whole world may reach only Zaria. His delivery on the scales of the mortars may not be up to 10%. So even though he is higher than me in ordination, in service I'll be superior to him. So in the reward system of heaven, God will reward you based on the quality of service you render. That is why you are brought into the kingdom without works. But you will have value in the kingdom by works. So anybody that teaches you the doctrine of doing nothing, of irresponsibility, have destroyed your life. You did nothing to come into the kingdom, but you will do everything to be relevant in the kingdom. The Bible says, Have you received the kingdom that cannot be moved? You have received it. You did nothing for it. He said, But let us receive grace. Wherefore, we serve God acceptably in reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. The consuming fire is the judgment of God. So the degree to which you will be rated is subject to the kind of service that you render. So on the strength of service, men are still distinguished into rights. And then the third thing that distinguishes men in the kingdom is intimacy. God loves those that have intimacy with him. It, it is one of the lost of God to find worshippers that worship him in spirit and in truth. So any man that has intimacy with God is different from every other person. Paul said, we are the circumcision. We are the separated from the world that worship God in the spirit rejoicing in Christ Jesus having no confidence in the flesh so in case you want to define the life of Paul he has given it to you we are separated from the world our life now is a perpetual devotion unto the Lord and we do that in the spirit and we don't do it because we are orators we don't do it because we are skillful we do it because we have lost, lost our confidence in the flesh and we completely on God so that is a mobile altar you are in the examination where everybody is cheating. You won't cheat, you will fail. And you will repeat the course. And then you choose not to cheat. That is worship. It's not singing with a good voice. Worship gives your life back to God as a sacrifice. These are the things that distinguishes men in the kingdom. And when principality find men that have rank, they are the ones they go from first to territory. If a principality comes to a territory, he will not fight the ordinary man. He will look for the gifted man. Because if he gets one gifted man, he has conquered 1,000 people. 
You know the name principality means a prince without a territory. The word is prince. Epality is an ancient English. He is a prince that has no territory. He had a place with God, but he has been cast. There is no place for him anymore. So what a principality is looking for, his great obsession is prince. The greatest obsession of a principality is to have a place among men. Because that's the only thing he lacks. Did you remember that the Bible said Lucifer walked in the midst of the coals of fire and that he was in Eden in the mountain of God in Ezekiel chapter 28, chapter 28 verse 13. But when he was cast from there, there was no space. So principalities look for space. And when they come to a territory, all they are looking for is to have a territory where they can rule. And the only way they can access a territory is to look for people that have a very large place in that territory. And they enter into them. And the moment they enter into them, they have authority to the degree to which those men have authority. That's how spirit cities are built. So, for example, a prince enters this territory and he begins to look for those who are prophetic. And then he discovered there are 20 prophets on this campus. And the scope of the ordination is to reach the whole world. So they will first of all labor to corrupt those prophets. Did you notice that the anger of God is so vexed against the princes that destroy the prophets? He said in Revelation 2.15, he said, I will kill you on the bed of affliction. You that corrupts the prophets with immorality. So demons don't waste their resources. When they come, they look for the gifted ones. If they can enter into you, oh man, they have taken the land. The reason darkness will go ahead before they come is because they need to create sets of appetites in you. Those appetites are the gate that they access the territory from. For example, if you discover that there is lust in you, hmm, you don't need to look far. The spirit is already a ruler over your life. Do you know what? The Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14, it said, we have not received the spirit of this world. But the spirit is of God. Wherefore we know the things that are freely given to us. So the same way you receive the spirit of God, the same way you can receive the spirit that is of this world. But how does the spirit of this world enter into a man? He said, love not the world. It are the things that are in the world. He said, for they that love the world, the love of the Father is not in them. So any time you discover that lust is operating in you, another spirit has been enthroned over your life. He said, what is in the world? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So if you discover that your operating system is pride, you don't need to go far. There is a being correlated over your life. Have you noticed those young guys that uh, anytime they say there is a gathering like this, then they rush and carry their father's car. They will not come until every place is full. So they will drive. And when they are coming, they drive rough to create attention. Then they park. And when they park, they just come out. So that you will see that they came with a car. What is up? Their operating system is pride. Those type of people, you don't need to check too far. The prince of this world is already ruling over this. You find a guy that all his priority is women. He wants to impress every girl. When they say, come and give in church. If they say, put the money in the offering basket, he will never pledge. But if you say, those who want to give 20,000 come out, then brother will move. And then he will stand like this. He is being conscious of everybody that you see that he's the only person that has the capacity to give 20,000. He is not a prince, the prince of this world. If you tell put the money in the basket, he will never. Lost, pride have, is ruling over him. And that is why the things of God can never mean so much to him. You know what? He's a, he's a carnal man. He's ruled by spirits apart from God. And he said, the natural man receives not the things of God. They are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually designed. Did you notice the set of people that Paul said the gospel cannot impact are the people that the prince of this world blinded their hearts. Their hearts are blinded. So a principality comes into a territory. He looks for the gifted guides. And if he takes over their lives, he has taken over the territory. This is what they do. If they find a prophet, for example, or find a few prophets, they may need a quorum for them to be able to rule over the territory. So when they enter, they will gather the prophets and they will pervert their gifts. 
you know, the devil have no gift to give. Only God gives gifts. And the problem with the gift of God is that it is without repentance. So even if you choose to worship the devil, the gift will still be operating. So they will make out of them witches and wizards. If the guy is not so trained, he may not know, but everything that comes out of his mouth is negative. He doesn't know that those things is uttering. He will just stand and say, this land no go ever better. They are using the gate of his authority to place a curse on the land. And he never knew that he was a ranking prophet in the spirit. The prince went ahead of him. So those wars that he's speaking, he's imputing negative energy into the territory. And because he has said it, it will stand. Because he's a king in the spirit. He said, where the word of the king is, there's power. Who can say unto him, what was that? I'm showing you how this thing works so that you become careful because some of you will say, is it, is it a bad thing? That's what I felt. Is it now wrong to say what I feel? You don't know you are giving vocabulary to a spirit that wants to rule over the land. Jesus said, every idle word the man speaks, he will account for it. And sometimes they train them so much and they become skilled in the art of sorcery and wizardry. Corrupting the land, polluting the land with curses. When a principality succeeds in getting a territory, then what he does is that he gives space for the ruler of the darkness of this world. The job description of the ruler of the darkness of this world is different from the job description of a principality. The job description of a principality is to secure place. The ruler of the darkness of this world, the word ruler means a magistrate. A ruler of darkness, what he does is that his duty is to formulate laws. So that now that they have a space, anybody that come under that space will become their slave. So they are the ones that preserve the heritage of darkness in the land. They formulate laws. Whereas a principality works with a witch, take over a territory through causes, through divination. But a ruler of darkness walks with a witch that have increased in rank. The rank of those ones are called warlocks. A warlock is a wise man. They are the ones the scripture call wise men. Did you read about Babylon in the book of Daniel? They are wise men. They are the ones that tell you when it will be right to start the Ramadan fast. Because they have the powers to study the alignment pattern of the moon, the sun, and the star. They know when they could trap evil dimension from, he from, from the heavenlies. They are the ones that tell when they will go and harvest the new yam. If you let your yam become so big in the farm and be protruding, you can never harvest it. Until the time when the warlock says you have rested, they formulate laws. They are the one bring the idea of ladies wearing tight trousers. You now be arguing in church. You say, let's take from the Bible. Where the Bible say girls will not wear trousers, or where the Bible say girls will not. You are not wise. You don't know that a law has entered the land. Every lady that sows wants to reveal her cleavages. She doesn't know she's under a law. And after some time, you say, let's pray for five hours. Five hours. She will come and pray for 15 minutes and sleep for four hours, 45 minutes. The valve of her soul is weak because she's under a law. And when you come under a law, you become a slave. You may say, but I'm not committing immorality. You're under a law. You are dealing under the government of a warlock. And you don't know that you are advertising the dimensions of the spirit. The moment you become an agent of the demonic realm, you become an advertiser. So the demons, if he wants to choke the heart of the guy who is learning and trying to follow God, he will just lead you to pass on the guy's street. And the guy, the guy, well, he fell two weeks ago. He's trying to clean himself back. So he started a three days fast. And then when he came out, they thought they now saw you. And then he goes back and starts masturbating. Anytime the spirit wants to move, he will just go like this. And then you, the puppet, you will just do your mascara, put your foundation and then we are, then you. <laughs> you, are, you are a dispenser of the possibilities of darkness. That's how they view the systems. Did you read in Egypt? Moses came and displayed all the wonders. And Genesis and Jambres. These are wise men. They are the ones that keep the integrity of the rulers of darkness in the land. They were resisting him. Until the time came, they said, Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. When the warlocks give up, the authority of the ruler of darkness is expiring. That was when deliverance was revealed. 
And did you notice that in Exodus chapter 12 verse 12, when God came to judge Egypt, he didn't judge only Pharaoh. He said, I will come down to Egypt and I will join the cause of Egypt. The rulers of the darkness that kept the people in perpetual bondage, God came and judged them. When they were leaving Egypt, they traveled through the Red Sea because they needed to destroy the Leviathan that is in the belly of the ocean. You may not know that medicine originates from the intelligence of Leviathan. In ancient history, when the study of medicine began, if they bring you to the serpent and the serpent kiss your forehead, you will be healed. That's where medicine began from. <laughs> I was talking yesterday at the College of Health Science in Benue State University. They just graduated their doctor. It was a massive conference. They said, come and speak. And then we began to tell them about the anatomy of man. You know, they studied the body in the lab, but they didn't study the soul and the spirit. So we needed them to understand that the spirit rule over the body. So the doctors that graduated, some of them, the way they dress into the beauty, they came like this. You know, because of the strike and everything, some of them were in school for eight years. But now they are doctors. We came and showed them that that pride that the devil succeeded in putting in their heart is the reason why they will never be relevant with God, even if they practice medicine for 35 years. Because if the devil succeeds in ruling over your soul, you are a slave. The rulers of the darkness, they are the most jealous among the principalities. They will never let you go. You will try. You are under that addiction for 10 years now. You want to break up, they will fight. You do 21 days fasting. The day you thought you are broken out, they will come again. Until the ruler of darkness is judged, he will not let you go. They are the most jealous. They are called magistrates. They formulate laws in the territory. And when the ruler of darkness succeeds in putting people under bondage, then spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places come. See, that's the succession Paul outlined in Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 12 to 18. The spiritual wickedness, their job is to perpetrate wickedness. That's when you just wait. They tell you that ah, there is kidney problem. Why? The wickedness, wickedness is now working. You walk with a principality, you were enjoying yourself. That time you were wearing short cut. Every boy that sees you say, Ah, you are beautiful. You say, Thank you. You go and stand at the road. You are taking self. In the afternoon, 2 a.m., when the sun is hot, then you see them with photographers. You stand like this. You stand like this. They want to upload it on Facebook so that they can have 700 likes. That time they didn't know they were sleeping under the corridor of the principality. On night they arrived where the rulers of darkness are. And then they woke up one day, they say, Your womb has a challenge. So they now begin to look for God. Even if you carry torchlight, you can't find him because your soul is corrupt. <laughs> Demons are intelligent beings. The principality, some of them were archangels. The archangels were the first angels that God created. They were there when God designed the foundations of the world. He said in Job 38, verse 7, He said, Where were you? When I created the foundations of the world, when the source of the morning sank into creation. Lucifer, he was the one that walked in the midst of the coals of fire. It was when Lucifer left heaven that the seraphims took his assignment. The seraphims that are called the burning ones. The work they are doing in heaven now was the job description of Lucifer. He walked in the midst of the coals of fire. He was the one that guided the holiness of God. The Bible said, Thou that sealed the sun. When Lucifer shows up, the sun go dim. He was brighter than the sun. Thou that seated the sun. If he walks here now, you will not see the sun again. He said, From the days of that creation, that pipes and that tablets were indeed. The guy was created with musical instruments. You see, the keyboard, the drum are all laboring. Lucifer doesn't need this one. If he shakes like this, he fills heaven with sound. He knows the emotions of God. That's why he's the only cherub that is called the anointed cherub. Because he had a connection with God where he could read his emotions. If God wants to dance, Lucifer knows what to do. He just needs to shake his pipes and his tablets when he feels. Anointed cherub, full of glory. The Bible said the merchandise of wisdom and beauty were cut off by creation. And that being fair, you think you are wiser than him. The only advantage you have against him is to be hidden in Christ. It's not given to man that walketh to order his steps. You are doing business with principalities and powers. Rulers of the darkness of this world. Spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. 
The first set of people that provide witnesses are the intercessors. That's what I want to talk about in the next 10 minutes. Then we'll begin to pray. There will be no witness in the land except intercessors arise. Intercessors are the sort that talk to a generation. Meanwhile, it's important for you to know that there is rank in intercession. If you study Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 14, the Bible says, even if Noah done them, if they come here, they can't deliver the land. They will only deliver themselves. That means, among all the other intercessors, God picked those ones out that they have rank. Did you read in Jeremiah 15, verse 1? Save some of is come, they not pacify me. That means, in the whole of the existence of the human race, the only people that can move the hand of God, even when he's not willing, is someone Moses. There's rank in the intercessory quadrant. If you relevant with God, you must begin first of all the journey of prayer. It's not about doctrine first. It's about life. It is in prayer that your life and your soul is recalibrated. Everything the devil plants in a man, in the gate of prayer, those things are restored. Prayer is the only technology that has the ability to purify the soul of man. You know, Jesus said in Luke 18 verse 1, He said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. The word is ought. That means according to the design of man, pray is part of his DNA. If you want to be restored back to factory setting, the only possibility in God that can achieve it is prayer. He said, men ought. So if you find yourself in a place where fulfilling the purpose of God and the mandate of God that is according to your ordination is not possible, you need to come back first and build an altar of prayer. When God wants to do business with man, the first corridor he is the corridor of prayer. If you are here and you can't pray, don't dream about becoming big with God. There's no hope. There's no hope. You will always be a puppet in the hands of the devil. You see, the best way to describe what prayer does to you is to look at the tabernacle. There are three porches, three spaces in the tabernacle. The first place in the tabernacle is the gate. The gate is the revelation of Jesus. It is made up of blue robe, purple robe, white robe, and scarlet robe. It represents the four offices of Jesus as king, son of man, as servant, and as the son of the living God. So you come in without anything. All you do is just give thanks. He said, we enter into his courts with thanksgiving. The revelation of Jesus, if it begins to hit you, then know that your prayer is beginning to touch a chord in the spirit realm. If you are praying and the word of God is not flashing your soul, what you are doing, you are just exercising your will. Keep it up, keep it up. When the revelation of Jesus begins to hit you, then know that you are beginning to enter into the chambers of holiness. And the far, as much as you can travel, is the degree to which your soul can be transformed. The moment you enter, the first thing you will see is the altar of sacrifice. That is when the flesh will be crucified. You may come with appetites. Struggling with masturbation, struggling with lust. If you pray well, what will happen is that on the altar of sacrifice, your flesh will be crucified. If you find a Christian that is still struggling with sin, he's not praying. You can't live in sin when you pray. And you cannot not live in sin. Don't pray. If you enter, you see the altar of sacrifice. That's when the Holy Ghost brings government over your soul. Government. You wake up, you want to eat. You say, no, don't eat. If you want to touch the food in your mouth, you feel as if somebody has died. What is happening is that your prayer has taken you as far as the altar of sacrifice. So the Holy Ghost wants to take the flesh. The powers of the flesh that makes you a slave in the hand of the principality. The Holy Ghost wants to cut it off. Because the moment the appetite is destroyed, the prince is dethroned. What gives him authority to keep working on you is because the appetite is alive. There are five things you will die to as a believer. Four of them you die to in Jesus. The only one you will die to is flesh. And one you do it as a living sacrifice. You'll be alive like this. You'll be cutting it off. That's why you, it's called a living sacrifice. You'll be alive. The Holy Ghost will be cutting your pride. You will be chiseling it like this. Right? You come to a place. Then you say, go and kneel down there and apologize. If you don't do it, you will not pass that class. You will repeat it for 10 years. If you like, be the president of JCCF. You will be there for 5 years. Until he deals with it, you can't move with God. And when you travel from the altar of sacrifice, then you come to the lava. The lava is where the priest washes his hand. That water is the Holy Ghost. 
is the sanctified power of the Holy Spirit. Pray you discover that you are changing from the inside. Why? Because men ought always to pray and not to fail. By the time the Holy Ghost walks on you, watches you sufficiently, then you are brought into the inner court. In the inner court, the first thing you see is the altar of food bread. God begins to feed you with new substance. You know, before now, all you had were philosophies of men. They say, heaven helps those who help, who help themselves. My brother. Well, where I come from in my village, this is how we do it. This time around, God will begin to give you fresh supply. You have lived on human wisdom and demonic intelligence for long. Now is the time for you to begin to interact with the Rima. The word of God comes alive. And as you hear it, you are strong. As you are strong. There was a time I, I had this need for money. I called on my friends and everybody didn't have anything to give me. So, what did they have? As I left, there was a song in my spirit. And I, I began to sing the song. Because we, now I know that sound is a vehicle of transport. You know, sometimes you pray, 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 you don't see answer. And then the moment you finish praying, going home, and then that song begins to play. play. I have a very big, who is always by my side, very big, but by my side, by my side. You didn't know that that song is the transport that will take you to where God is called El Shaddai. The supply of God that makes it big. That song is what will travel you there. You have done your prayer, but the vehicle have come. If you are not wise, you will not know. Then you will kill the song. Say this prayer while the prayer the works. When a man is growing in God, he becomes wise. When those things come, he knows that oh, his answer has come. Then you sing it until the song dies. As the song sang in my spirit, I sang it. I sang it. And suddenly I heard a word. He said, Woe unto the man that trusted the man and put his confidence in flesh. He said, For the arm of the tree fail. So all this word was looking for money, my confidence was in flesh. But when this word came, Strength in instant, I receive an alert instantly. So, when you come in the gate of prayer and you read the altar of shoe bread, God begins to strengthen your spirit man. And as God strengthens your spirit man, then you behold the menorah where God lightens your spirit. The scandal stand in the outer court, the light is the sun, in the inner court, the light is the rhema. The menorah is what lightens you. So, they may tell you you are sick. And then you are afraid. And then suddenly they say, you now hear in your spirit, by his stripes you are healed. If they like, let them diagnose whatever they want. Because you have heard by his stripes you are healed. That's now the light. That's why he said, thy candle shall light my feet. Job said, oh, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secrets of God were upon my tabernacles. He said, when I walked through darkness by the light of God, at this time, he's not walking with the philosophy of men. He's walking with the lighting candles of the menorah. And when you do that for long, then you come to the altar of incense. That's when your life can begin to provide witness. You are ready to call into the Holy of Holies. If God does not raise intercessors, there's no hope for the land. Because only on the altar of prayer does God raise his puritans. And in the last day, only puritans can proclaim the gospel. Because the gospel in the last days is the gospel of warfare. Spirits we fight. If you are not a Puritan, you can't stand and witness for Jesus in Christ. As you grow in intercession, what happens is that God gives you power. And then everything that the sorcerers do, the imaginaries can walk around and place curses in all the junction. It doesn't count anymore. When you lift your voice, it rises as incense into Zion. It will rise like a mist into the Holy of Holies. And it will download realities that will choke everything that was done. That's when suddenly you see the fight that will begin to break out. The people you were begging to come for fellowship from NC1, suddenly they now begin to come. The hunger begin to rise in their spirit. They want to know God now. Why? They can't tell. The powers that hold them bound. Prayer is beginning to uninstall it because intercessors are rising on the landscape. When intercessors begin to rise, then the incense from earth begins to go to heaven. And then the mighty hand of God is compelled to move. The rise of intercession is the first layer of deliverance that the intelligence can find. As intercessors grow in faithfulness, something happens. God promotes them and they become watchers. You know, an intercessor is a man that walks under open heaven. He's also a carrier of bodies. You know, 
they may not be doing so well in this exam that's something of a legitimate concern but if you open his heart the body he has is for the souls the body he has is for the territory he doesn't know why those things are happening what is happening is that it's the powers of his ordination pulling him into the inner chambers of God it's an intercessor the destiny of the land is crying because he says Savior shall rise upon my side the earnest expectation of creation he waited for the manifestation of the sons of God that body is on his heart can't explain why but everybody is sleeping he can't sleep the darkness in the land troubles him he's the land praying for the families and because he walks under open heaven every time he cries heaven hears him Elijah came to the king he said before God whom I stand that's an intercessor he is walking under open heaven he's a mobile carrier of the presence of God so he can legislate the counsel of God in the land legislator of truth as he speaks God raises his land he becomes a watcher when he becomes a watcher what happens is that nothing can happen in that territory without unless he's aware nothing can happen those are the type of people that God will say can I do it without telling my servant it's not the gift of the spirit we are talking about we are talking about ranking men in the spirit he has that talk with God nothing can happen Abraham sat at the gate and he was watching and suddenly three men walked by he knew by priesthood intelligence that these are not men my lord my lord my lord he has entered into a wisdom that is deeper than what mortal men can access my lord he said come in come in ha! the first thing they came they said well your crisis is answered now your wife will be with child and in the next time of life you will give birth but that's not why we came why we came is because they the they, they iniquity in Sodom have risen to heaven and we have come to judge it. That's when the watcher began to legislate in heaven. What happened there now was a courtroom. He said, What if you find 50 righteous men? He said, Far be it from you, the righteous God, to destroy both the righteous and the evil. What if you find 50 righteous men? He said, If I find 50 righteous men, I will get the land. They were going, He said, Let my Lord be offended. What if you find 40? He interceded until he stopped at 10. The reason he stopped at 10 was because he felt that based on the discipleship Lord has enjoyed from him, by now he should be able to disciple 10 people. But Lord was sleeping. So all of you who are intercessors and are sleeping here, you are the reason why this place is playing with darkness. Yes. You know, the ordinary Christian has no part to play, so it's not his problem. But you, that the Holy Ghost is troubling you every day, you have a part with him. And you are the one that the Bible said, if I tell the wicked man he will die, you don't tell him, I will demand his blood of your hand. Because by reason of your ordination, you should partner with Zion and bring to pass the counsel of God. What if you find ten righteous men say, I will spare the land? So I go ahead. That's the watcher. Did you read about Samuel? At the point came when the anointing of Samuel covered the whole of Rama. You cannot enter that man unless he permits you. So ten soldiers, they came, they began to prophesy. These people didn't know God. And then Saul was grieved and he came with armor. And the Bible said he prophesied naked throughout the night. Why? Because the watcher had created a surveillance over the land. Watchers. Watchers must arise. If the iniquity in the church will be corrected, then we must raise watchers. You see the choir, they are singing. All the dance steps, they are dancing. They sing till in the club. They are bringing the civilization of iniquity into the church. And you say, well, something wrong with it. No, nothing is wrong, but it's an inspiration from Hades. And it, it cannot survive on the altar of God. And the reason it continues to prosper is because they are not watchers. Watchers are like customs officers. They check the commodities that travel into the courts of God. That was why Daniel, they said, come, we want to make you a prince over the land. He said, no, no, no. Make Shadrach, Bishak, and Abednego princes. He said, Me, I will sit at the gate. Because the gate is where legislation takes place. They may promote you, say, become a governor. And they, thank God, that's giving. If you know you are a watcher, you say, Please give another person. Me, I have checked in heaven. I read the handwriting of, of my ordination. Governorship is not part of it. On, the, on what God wrote from Zion supposed to keep the heritage, the worship and the memory of God alive in this territory. So give that position to another person. Here we sit at the gate. At the gate legislation takes place. 
You know, you may think he's the guy standing on the altar that is the most important person. If you check the scales of Zion, you will discover that God will call 15 people before he calls the man on the altar. The guy that makes things happen is the guy that knows how to deal with the roots in the spirit. When you grow as a watcher, then you become a judge. As a judge, you become like the right God on earth. Anything God wants to do, he will relax because you are there. Did you read about best? They said they wanted to do a, a witchcraft meeting. He said, so long as God is in heaven and me among earth, it won't. He didn't need to invoke God. He had grown to a level where he can win the authority of Zion. I don't know what motivates you. May I have a motivation that has relevance in the kingdom? There are things that are bigger than time and space. They are relevant, more relevant than blood and bone. Men of understanding, they pursue after those things. He said, no, 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 no. We don't need to pray. I heard the story. They said, oh, we gathered people. He said, we have tried all the sorcery, but the rain can't come. So they gathered all the pastors. The pastors said, okay, let's go and pray for seven days. And the young man stood up and said, is it rain that is your problem? He said, go home. Run because rain may stop you on the road. That's a judge. You grow to a point in God when you become a wielder of authority. Then the land is ready to be saved. There will be no witness on this land unless most of you give your life to fulfill the mandate of God. Unless most of you submit your life as a gate that God will use to achieve what He wants. Tonight, God wants to raise watchers. God wants to raise intercessors. God wants to raise ranking men that will be willing to submit their life, put away the ambition, and say, Lord, use me. I'm here. Many souls perish. Islam threatens our existence. Lord, I will rise. I will defy sleep. I will defy my priorities. I will defy my appetite to see your will come to pass. And you rise on your feet as you begin to pray. You Lord, you ancient, say your own skin. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty. It's not about age. At the age of 17, most, uh, Timothy was the bishop of Ephesus. It is how far you will go in grace. Today, God wants to raise warriors. God wants to raise people with the Mordecai spirit. God wants to raise waters that can preserve his heritage in the land. You want to be numbered? It's time to pray another time. Shakabate Goberian Epaphra. Come on, 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 It's a special service. The people that God spoke to, they know. Because the Holy Ghost have convicted you once and again. 
You are in that category. Before we begin to minister in the spirit. Can you go ahead and tell the Lord one more time. Now I understand the scope of your demand over my life. Use me, Lord. I didn't understand it before. I thought it was Christianity as usual. Now I know. Use me, Kapataboria. You bring religion, you'll be in trouble. You'll miss out. You can't help the mortars. God wants to ask three special messages. Listen. Pay attention. I need your attention now because you need to hear for the word to travel in your direction. God wants to anoint three special messengers. These people I speak about, they have seen light from heaven before. Light. Light. And they know that there is broad of power that God has given to them. There is a specific instruction they have received of the Lord. At some point, He said, Don't defy your right hand. Only God knows what it means. Your right hand is the hand of power. The hand of God will descend upon them. As I pray now, just be open. Forget, don't try to help God. Father, in the name of Jesus, if you if you respond well, you will cause my spiritual senses to open. Father, in the name of Jesus, look upon your people, the ones that by ordination you have selected and you have carefully directed to come into this meeting. I ask now, Holy Spirit, cause your hand to come upon them. Amen. That is it. Be quiet now. Holy Ghost, touch. That's one. Holy Ghost, touch. Holy Ghost, touch. Special messengers from Zion. Holy Ghost, touch. Shaka pateke perina tabas. Perianda tahila patabwa. Beregonda periata. Orikana, orikana. Batita sakabaria. Three messengers. Special messengers. Special messengers. Special messengers. Balakabanda, Balakabanda. Help on the stage. Balakabanda, Periana. Erigata, Erigata, Erigata. Babanda, Sakabanda. Hello, hello, hello. Help on the Sakabakawa. Erianda Taya. Erianda Taya. Erianda Taya. Erianda Taya. Erianda Taya. Salabanda Kafea. Baraka Pataka. Hamba, Hamba, there was a vision. 
night of kingdom emancipation. It's a night of kingdom emancipation. A fire. Listen. Just be quiet now. Be quiet. Just shut the sound. Shut the sound. A fire. A fire will descend on heaven now. And it will hit some purpose. You will find yourself scream loud, don't control it. It's an evangelical fire. God is about to raise people that will enter campuses. Enter campuses and shut down darkness. It will be a fire. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Run on us now. Run on us now. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, let the fire come down. 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 Now. 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Fire. Fire. Evangelical fire. Evangelical fire. Evangelical fire. Evangelical fire. Help her. Help her. Help her. Evangelical fire. Sela kapanta parta sa. Se te te bonde prateka. Ari kunto, ari kunto. Para kamo. Se te te to, ese no. Ya papalia. Ya papalia. Ya papalia. Ya papalia. Ya papalia. Ya papalia. Ore na tapo. Manto kaparado a se pelina. Arlanda patoba. Rezanisco. Para kapanta konde. Se le kapapo. Se prakamina. Para kapara kapa. Feli da panda prata sebo, se da 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 da, mando pare to sonde prate. Sombra taka pate. Then, listen, listen, listen. There's an angel moving around here. There's an angel, there's an angel. I'm seeing prophets, 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 prophets. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Touch them, touch them. Touch them, 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 of Zion, match with the armies of men. It's a portal in the spirit. I see that we have broke that portal. They will secure alignment with the heavenlies. Alignment with the heavenlies. There's about to be an alignment. But there are specific persons that have strange encounters with God. That God wants to use to quicken us. On this right hand side, there's a lady here. Listen. You have been having, having angelic encounters for the past six months. For the past six months. For the past six months. Encounters. Strange angelic encounters. The hand of God is about to pick you. Shateko. Veradinos. Veradinos. Look at her. Veradinos. Veradinos. Look at them. 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 Come on. Come on. Help her. Help her. She's in the front. We are entering the valley of the valley of us now. We look at the path. It's a couple of things that we're doing. Get it down, get it down, get it down. Send to the road of Sunday. We are going to have a lot of the path.
apostles here. There are three apostles. Listen. Listen, listen. Pay attention. There are three apostles here. One of you have seen the Lord. One of you have seen the Lord. One of you have seen the Lord. Who is that one? God is about to apostles. One of you, you have seen the Lord in a vision. Help us under the power. I don't want a new job. I'm looking for them. Who is the person? Sataka Bonte Pariata. A company of apostles. A company of a maybe the person has gone under the power. Bring the person. Father, Father, anoint them now. Anoint them. Anoint them now. Anoint them now. Anoint them now. Look at that. Help her. Anoint them. Apostolic company. Janta Paros Paridiando. Verino Paschi Paradiesto. Oh, Malaka Boas. Kidash. There's a prophetic angel over here. Listen, those of you here. Stop praying. Those of you here. Of you here. Hands up. Your hand. Angel. There's a prophetic angel in here. Father. 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 I activate it. I activate it. I activate it. Help her. Japa Tetembe. Reni Kaboas. There's a prophetic angel. De los casinos. Jelibando Sebrenivos. Frate Toski. Zeneko. La cabina Toski. You are implicated for service. You are implicated for service. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ah, hey. Oh, yeah. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah, ah. Angelic encounters, you don't know what they mean. God is about to create an alignment pattern between you and the angels. I've seen so much angelic activities, gifts, gifts of the spirit. Angels are giving gifts, they are giving gifts to people, gifts of healing, gifts of healing, gifts of healing. Somebody is being connected with something that looks like electricity, a power surge. A power sword. A power sword. So that you can begin to walk in power. In power. In power. So let it happen. I make it happen now. In the name of Jesus. Jala Branda Pratasinas. Bella Kapala Pandre Pinos. Rika Banda Professor Kapalatinas. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There's so much the Lord wants to do, but we are out of time. Time is a body. Just lift your hands toward heaven. And ask God for fresh fire. Ask God for fresh fire. Ask God for fresh fire. I don't know why. The Lord keeps telling me. Listen, listen. The Lord keeps telling me. There are many of you here who have an apostolic calling. I don't know if these people are under the power. Listen, I'm talking to something here. You have seen Jesus with your open eye. And you have seen, since the day you encountered Jesus, you see things before they happen. You know things before they happen. You know things. Who is this person? He wouldn't let me go. Who is this person? Are you the one? You are the one. Come. She's under the power, so we can't tell what's happening with her. See, he's a seed. He's an apostolic seed. You don't even know what. You have the same experience. 
Jesus, would you let me go? He said, it's time to activate the call. You don't even know what it means. But you see that that anointing keeps fighting you. You enter a relationship, it breaks. You can't walk. He wouldn't let darkness control you. You are also having that spirit. Can you stretch your hand towards this direction? As we pray for them, something will lead them and enter the congregation. As God activates them, you begin to activate many other apostles in this congregation. We need apostles to rise. We need apostles. Father, the hour has come. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. It's your time. Lift your hands to heaven. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Let the coronation begin. Holy Ghost, now. 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 Move, Holy Ghost. Apostolic fire. Apostolic fire. Apostolic fire. Apostolic fire. I bring you to the of the country. bring them. It will be a healing service. But this night, the last set of people God wants to activate, they are psalmist. 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 There needs to be a sound resonating from this territory. When that sound aligns with the sound of heaven, then dimensions will begin to break. God wants to anoint psalmist. Just be calm. Just be calm. Stop the keyboard. You don't need to pray anymore. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you can stop praying, stop praying. If you can, let's just be quiet. Let's be quiet. Let's be quiet. It's time to hear sounds from heaven. Peace be still in the name of Jesus. I declare peace. 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 Peace be still. Peace be still. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Listen. You just focus to heaven now. Focus. You are about to begin to hear sound. God wants to act psalmist, psalmist, psalmist. The ceremony will begin after the count of three. You know, I told you, men are the custodians of authority in the earth realm. The reason we place count is so that we can regulate operations. After the count of three, God will begin to anoint psalmist, 
psalmist. Holy Spirit, let the sounds begin. One. Holy Spirit. Two. Don't be a spectator. You may miss out if you don't know the hour of your visitation. Holy Spirit. Three. Let it begin now. From my left to my right. From the front to the back. Holy Ghost, move. Psalmist, 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 psalmist. Man who can pick sounds from the heights of Zion. From the heights of Zion. Oceans be watchful, be watchful. He's sipping it gradually. He's sipping it. He's sipping it. He's sipping it. He's sipping He's sipping Sounds from heaven. Some is the rise. Help us of the rock. Help us of the rock. Some is. It's becoming stronger. It's becoming stronger. Blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with
So Father, we ask that peace be still in the name of Jesus. We ask that peace be still in the name of Jesus. We ask that peace be still in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. of your spirit it is called the supply of the spirit the goal of the spirit is to be seen spirit crave to manifest through what happens the atrium is the spectrum where spirit realities are manifested in eternity only God reigns but on earth man becomes a window through which the dimensions of immortality can be seen. Every man that connects with Christ becomes a window through which different dimensions of the God life can be manifested. Can you go ahead and establish a connection tonight? Maraba sopa hata kome ala huata ha zeu aparato babazunu da halakatua repo ata basuata kibombora haba babanas. Rava bondre sika paras reduda haswanda paliatwa melu kara he baba bondra hadakata dias rafa tombra satoa rahira sapandoa baba baba tidas reka babandro sahara diatwa veta kizo surabataniasta our walk is a walk with spirits we are called to give expression to spirits it is not something you do in your head it's not a cerebral reality it is a spiritual reality it is born from the heart of the father yakapa paratwa betasura abdakadoas shedida kalabarata sundra takapa taboria tamira hatakapoa ora hasakino mara atakapas Oh, Tonight we will fly. We will fly in the spirit. We will fly. You reign. You ancient Zion king. You are the you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, The revival is about to be born. I want to salute the point man of Revenant Christian Network, Pastor Justice, for being a part of this hallowed assembly. It's a congregation of the righteous. It's a congregation of the righteous. You don't show up here by mistake. 
You come because you were numbered by ordination. Nobody comes by mistake. I tell you, not one person. He says, sinners shall not stand in the congregation of the right. Not one person shows up by mistake. You are mighty on last week and I'm here today there is one thing that is peculiar there is an operation of the spirit of God that is breaking out in the heart of persons a few persons that have been numbered by ordination a burden is breaking in their heart and it's a burden for prayer because when revival is about to be born what happens is that men are burnt up in the place of prayer their very being is burnt up on the altar of sacrifice they are poured out in the place of prayer it is the sacrifice of prayer that revival rise upon it is not only happening here it is happening everywhere around there is a web of the spirit of god that is clothing men bring them to the altar of prayer the altar of prayer the altar of prayer the altar the altar of prayer the shoulders of sons people who have been refined by the holy ghost to become custodians of the bodies of the heritages of god that is meant for this dispensation people who don't know jesus who have not journeyed through the portals of life and made contact with the throne of the i am that i am they are walking on the street with remas whereas they don't know the shape and the structure of the spirit realm it's an abuse that is why you see people running into mysticism Babylonian Scientology without life, without texture, without substance, without essence. God is about to do a tangible thing, and only those who understand the dynamics of life, only those who understand the movements of the spirit, will be given the privilege to lay their hands on the plow. It is not a calling for everybody, it's a calling for those who understand the beatings and the heartbeat of the Father, who are willing to, to pour the ambition their sacrifices until they apprehend Jesus. Can you talk to Jesus tonight? If you have come to see a man, sorry to disappoint you. I have come only to erect Jesus as a spectacle for as many who can look upon him. He said that he may pour upon us 
a spirit of praise and supplication so that we may look upon him that was pierced we may look upon him that was pierced Amakora hatakapariata Alleluia Alleluia Listen, I've not started ministry. When I start ministry, what I'll do is I will jack your faith level to a realm where you can touch. You will see the spirit realm for the first time tangibly. But listen to me. Listen. There are some persons that are already prepared. They are already aligned. So as the wave begins to come, they will be the first partakers because they have put themselves in the place of prayer. So God wants to give them the privilege to be the first to touch of the wind of the spirit. And so therefore, spirit of the living God. Therefore, spirit of the living God. That you begin to brood upon them, brood upon them. Hallelujah. 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 is about to begin an angelic angelic procession we are connecting we are plugging to heaven we are plugging we are plugging can you go ahead and plug to heaven plug to heaven plug to heaven It's going to be three days of revival. I tell you, some of you, your, your altars will be reawoken. Some of you, your passion for the pursuit of the kingdom will be activated. Your eyes will be open to see the blueprint of your ordination. Life will begin to make meaning. Because until you can perceive of the whispers from eternity, you don't have a frame of reference. Because life is navigated in one orientation. It is towards the Christos. And that orientation is from the heart, the center of eternity. Until you begin to perceive whispers from eternity, you have no reference in time. You are lost. You are lost. Most of you, your eyes will open. You will begin to see the blueprint of your life. I'll just have to pause and teach. So that we don't get lost in the atmosphere. But you will see Jesus in three days. <laughs> you don't need to believe. 
carry you there. Most of you don't even know the road. So how do you begin to contemplate it? I know the path and I will take you there. Let me quickly disabuse the mind of somebody. You came because you were invited. So you thought you came on the strength of an invitation. Nobody comes into the presence except the Father draws him. Have you not read from the scriptures? He says, sinners shall not stand in the congregation of the righteous. There is no man that has the capacity to bring you to the presence except as the Father draws you. And when the Father, when the Father begins to draw men, it means he is about to activate the purpose for their creation. It was Saul that was looking for his father's splitting asses. And after he traversed many cities, he came to a point where he was disillusioned. Because obviously there was no way to go. They had traveled for three days. And while he suggested returning back home, the servant told him, he said, there is a man of God in this city. He said, let's see him. Perhaps he will tell us where the missing houses are. And Saul said, we don't have anything to offer him. He said, I have two pens, pennies here. And when they went to see Samuel, the Bible records, he said, before Paul came, the day before God told him, by this time tomorrow, the man that comes to see you, Anointing as king. Sometimes there are immortal strategies, immortal calculations over your life. They are floating on your head. You are not given the opportunity to tap into those whispers. So you are just walking. You think you are stranded. But what is happening is an intelligence weaved from the counsel of God to journey you into your heritage. The young man was never aware. He didn't know there was a deliberation between the prophet of God and the monarch of Zion himself concerning his destiny. He was looking for asses that were missing. It is a, a dimension of the wisdom of God that has brought you here. You didn't come because Apostle Harume was coming. You came because of the timetable of your ordination. This is the Kairos time. You know, Saul could not believe his eyes. When he met Samuel, he said, is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be the captain of his house? The guy said, ah, ah. as far as I remember, the only experience and the only reality surrounding me is that I am from the tribe of Benjamin. And we are the least in the clan of Israel. And if my calculations are correct, I am not from the tribe of Judah. So there is no possibility of kingship resting on me. Because that's the only thing most of you know. You only know your circumstances. You have not seen the handwriting in the spirit. When Samuel was done with him, he said, tell the servant to go forward. Now we want to do kingdom business. And he anointed him. Just to clear your doubt, he said, as you live here, you will see two men at the boundary of Benjamin, around the sepulchre of Rachel. He said, they will tell you that the asses you are looking for have been found. Now your father is crying over you. He said, as you go forward, you will find three other men coming. One with three loaves of bread. One with three keys. And one with a bottle of wine. He said, they will give you two loaves of bread. He said, receive it from them. He said, and as you go further, you will see a company of prophets around the plain of Tapo. And he said, they will be coming with tablets, pipes, harps. And he said, as they play it, he said, you will join them. You will begin to prophesy and the spirit of God will come upon you and you will become another man. It doesn't matter if you were layered to this place. What will happen is that in the course of the meeting, the spirit of God will come upon you and you will become another man. It is that other man that has the capacity to advance the ordinations of God. Your weaknesses are not a factor. The moment you have made an appearance in the presence, he said they go from strength to strength. Every one of them that appeared in Zion before the Lord. 
the moment you have made an appearance there is only one possibility they go from strength to strength the only plea I have for you is for you to open up your heart because he said when the vessels were filled he said the oil in the crew stopped flowing so he said to the widow he said go borrow many empty vessels and he said borrow not a few because the prophet knew that when the vessels are filled, the oil will stop flowing. Can you go ahead tonight and ask the Lord, enlarge the curtains of my habitation. Stretch abroad the boundaries of my heart that I may domesticate all that you have for this meeting.
it is the degree of your interaction with him that will determine how far you can go in the kingdom secondly your strength in the kingdom depends on the principles and the mysteries that you understand because it is the principles and the mysteries that the operations of the kingdom are built upon so when we come to the presence of god it's not only sufficient for us to enjoy the euphoria of the atmosphere it's also very important for us to travel beyond the euphoria of the atmosphere and touch the person from whence the realities are breaking out from because until you journey through the portals of the spirit and see jesus and make contact with him you will just be floating in the atmosphere like a piece of paper you will not have orientation you will not have bearing and you will not have capacity and standing and you may not even notice it until the waves of life are marshaled at you that is when you will discover that all that you were doing was trapped in the soulish realm all that you were doing had no bearing in god and that is why the bible said if you faint in the day of adversity it means your strength is small only the men that have taught jesus have strength and capacity in the spirit and only the men that understand the mysteries of the kingdom have the authority that is required to legislate the policies of god the bible said when god appeared to job you know job was the richest of all men in the east he was the wisest he was like the cardinal of the east at the time of his civilization there was none who had understanding like job in fact the bible said when job spoke his wars were like the rain he was known as a man of wisdom a man of rank and a man of stature but when he was perfected by the circumstances that were weaved from the spirit realm he lacked understanding to give interpretation to the things that were happening so he began to attack the wisdom of god and when god showed up from the whirlwind he said who is this that darkens counsel by wars without knowledge a man who has not traveled to jesus's realm with darkened counsel the moment he loses ability to interpret his circumstances you may be following jesus burning and vibrant for jesus then suddenly a member of your family dies suddenly you lose your job or suddenly you fail your exam then you begin to contemplate could it be, could it be because i am working with jesus that i'm failing and this my guy he was cheating in the exam he passed this one is not very serious with church he's passed the reason is because you have not understand the depth of what we are doing your work with god is still within your cerebral capacities your work with god is still trapped within the context of your soul so you think everything that happens in the kingdom you should have the ability to give interpretation to them but i'm sorry to disappoint you tonight brother because everything happening are realities that were already established in the spirit they are just breaking out in time as dispensation gave them allowance a man who has understanding he lives from eternity into time because life does not begin in time it begins in eternity and only a man who has seen jesus can give accurate perspective to the things that he goes through that is why our work with god begins first and foremost by our encounter with jesus but even after having encountered jesus it's still also important for us to study the laws that governs the operation of the spirit realm because the spirit realm is a realm that cannot be moved is a having received the kingdom that cannot be moved let us receive grace whereby we serve god acceptably in fear and in reverence for our god is a consuming fire the system is built on laws and anybody who doesn't understand the laws that governs the operation of the spirit realm we abuse the supply of grace in fact the bible says in the book of jude that some have turned the grace of god unto lasciviousness so you may come here and the atmosphere will be charged grace will be released upon you but if you don't understand precepts if you don't understand status if you don't understand ordinances everything that is invested in you will be a waste that is why you have attended many meetings but your life have not made progress that's why you have attended many meetings but the kingdom has not advanced on account of your existence because you don't understand precepts you don't understand status you don't understand ordinances the realm is governed by laws and it's the reason we teach we teach so that we bring men into understanding of truth any man who has apprehended the laws of the kingdom is a strong man i want to show you a few contexts in which the supply of the spirit of grace and supplication is important so that when you live here you will travel with the presence that you will carry here you know man of god pastor justice was talking and he said he has the capacity to stir the atmosphere and everybody will be under the anointing now that is a window in the spirit he has understood the laws that makes it happen he doesn't stumble in and out when you have apprehended a thing a reality in the spirit you have the capacity to manifest it any 
day any time that's when you have known it because knowledge in the spirit is in layers the first time you heard of it what you know is you know about it you don't know it because every knowledge in the spirit is a person you can know about a person but you don't know the person so we call that kind of knowledge I do you are aware you are aware about the move of the anointing you are aware about the move of the spirit but you don't know the spirit so you are the level of awareness you need to journey beyond awareness into a prognosis where it is revealed to you the precepts the principles that covers the operation is revealed to you and even after a prognosis you journey into gnosko where you interact with it until you become one with it that is when you are a witness because the goal is colonization the plan of jesus is to colonize the atrium so that the atrium will become an extension of heaven so that the atrium will become a corridor that he has his authority and dominion and only the man who has capacity to knowledge experiential knowledge can colonize the world for jesus so i will show you a few precepts tonight so that you will know where you fit into the equation because the things we are about to discuss tonight they are not things for every believer when we begin to talk about kingdom advancement we are talking about the experiential dimensions of salvation it's not the legal dimension everybody can accept apprehend the legal dimension you confess jesus and you are saved but when you begin to talk about expanding the frontiers of the kingdom you do it by the holy ghost at that time christianity moves from confession to profession it is experience that speaks in that context and only a man who has understanding can walk in experience that is why god told job in job chapter 38 verse 4 he said declare now if you have understanding it was not just a question he was asking job he was telling job that the only basis upon which you can make a declaration and it can come to pass is when you have understanding i want to show us a few things in scriptures tonight so that i will bring us to understanding by the time i'm done setting the coordinates from tomorrow we will begin to advance by power we will begin to establish people in their ordinations we will begin to bring people into corridors of experience but you need to know Jesus in the letters as well. Somebody say experiential dimensions of salvation. If you don't come there and you begin to talk, your life is at risk. Because every time you say thy kingdom come, you have declared war. Because the kingdom does not exist in a vacuum. That declaration you are making you are actually unseating a demon who has been enthroned over that territory and the demon will fight you and even if you have escaped his claws he will fight your circumstances so if you don't have mastery of laws the demon can plague your health if he can't get you he can frustrate your result he can frustrate your family he can frustrate your circumstances he begins to search for every loophole in your life because what he wants to do is that he wants to frustrate you to a level where you will turn away from the kingdom by yourself. So you need mastery. You need understanding. So that you can take authority over everything that concerns your life. The experiential dimension. Yeah. vagabonds we were boys on the streets we were masters technocrats in iniquity we were wise in demonic intelligence manipulators look at us by what means were we apprehended from darkness young men that should waste away in the clubs the hand of God was stretched and he pulled us out of darkness this meeting, somebody will be pulled out of darkness. <laughs> somebody will be pulled out of the claws of masturbation. Somebody will be pulled out of the claws of secret iniquity, the bondage of pornography, the things that are hidden in your heart that you can't tell your best friend. 
God will travel there. It's called the experiential dimensions of salvation. You can stay on the legal side and confess Jesus, but you'll be a slave of pornography. You'll be a slave of iniquity until these matters become real to you. That's when the scope of your salvation can touch your spirit, your soul, and your body. That's when asking for the spirit of grace and supplication will be necessary. Because then the Holy Ghost will be strong in your life. These are not topics for babes. Don't just think the leadership has a body. Say, Lord, that you may supply the spirit of grace and supplication. For who? The question is who will walk in the reality? The guy who is interested in football more than the Holy Ghost? The guy who goes to the house and is only browsing pornographic sites? Even if the grace rests, he cannot walk with it. It's not possible. That's why we need to join into experience first. When I came into the faith, I had ambition. Oh my God. I thought Jesus could be known in one week. I rushed to the foundation school teacher. I said, come on brother. I will be there. The guy teach, teach, teach. I will go back, read the whole scriptures, memorize them. I wanted him to know that I have known the scriptures. Know the scriptures? <laughs> I quoted all the scriptures. It was in my head. But the only thing that dwells in your head is death. Because your mind is separated from the Holy Ghost. The longest journey of a believer is the journey from his head to his heart. It's a journey from the mind to the spirit. I didn't understand. I thought Jesus could be known cerebrally. After some time, the gate of life opened and God began to carry me through process. I journeyed on that corridor for a long time before I knew what it means. When Jesus said, Thou shalt be witnesses unto me. He didn't say thou shalt be witnesses for me. What most people are doing is that they are witnessing for Jesus. Witnessing for Jesus is talking about Jesus to the world. Witnessing unto Jesus is for your life to become the proof that Jesus is real. That one does not require talking. Who you are is a proof that Jesus is alive. You come to your class and then all that is steaming out of you is the dimensions of the immortal realm. You speak to people, they begin to weep. And maybe you didn't say anything big. They just say, God loves you. And when you say, God loves you, love left you to the person. That part, you don't know how to explain it. Because the love that traveled in from you to the person is a human being. It's, an, it's a real personality. It's a personality in the spirit. God loves you and Jesus travels from you into the person. That's the experiential dimension. It takes process to arrive there. You shall be witnesses all to me. You show up in your class. And then suddenly. They are doing what they want. But when they saw you. You didn't say anything. But the kingdom is raging out of you like light. And the guy that was misbehaving. Suddenly coordinates himself. And then he just sits down. The energy that left you. Choked the energy of the demonic. That was raging out of him. It's expedient. Most of us don't have experience. Jesus didn't say, you shall be known by what you say. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs. What is a sign? A sign is a pointer to a reality. So when these signs flow from you, people will notice that, guy. there is something you are connected to. So they begin to search that thing. They begin to search. What is this that is happening through your life? Because they know it's not you. It's not about you. These signs. We have not been taught the gospel of the kingdom. So all our exercise of faith is to receive from God. And then the more we receive, the more big we think we are with God. It's when you go into eternity that God will begin to show you that, well, everything I supplied in time was to make you comfortable and to give you capacity to advance my will. I had a purpose before I created you. And if all you have and all you are does not translate to an advancement of that purpose, you are a waste. Because on this side, we judge men by the scales of service. And service in this context is service on the scale of purity. 
So everything you have lived for will be burnt by fire. Because you were not taught the experiential dimension of kingdom service. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to show you what it takes to walk and to carry the weight of the spirit of grace and supplication. Because like I said, when we begin to talk about matters that borders on supplication, then it means our body has shifted from our personal needs and has shifted to the needs of God. So what does it take for us to possess the capacity to advance the will of God? All of these realities are tied to your call in God. And your call in God is threefold. I'll be very calm and gentle now so that even the least person among us will understand. For those of you who are very high in the spirit, please bear with us. <laughs> Let's carry the, the, the least among us along. You see, the Bible said in Isaiah chapter 51, He said, Hearken unto me, all ye that love righteousness. He said, Look unto thy father, Abraham, and unto Sarah that bore thee. For I have called him alone and I have blessed him. And he said, The Lord shall comfort Zion. Hallelujah. So the instruction is to look unto Abraham, thy father. How did Abraham come to a point where he possessed the capacity to intercede for nations? Any reality you are trying to study, he said, look unto the men that have advanced in that reality and have manifested it. Because the dealing of God to one man is not because he is special. The dealing of God to a man is a revelation of how God does his things. So he said his word unto Jacob, he lightened unto Israel. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11, he said, the things that happened to them, it happened to them for an example. And it is for our admonition unto whom the end of the age is come. Romans 15 verse 4. He said the scriptures are written at four times. They were written for our learning. So that through patience and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. So one of the ways of tapping into an understanding of the principles of the kingdom is to study the men that excelled in it. Because in that scripture in Isaiah chapter 21 verse 12 the Bible the word supplication there is actually the general word for prayer. A grace that gives you capacity for prayer. A prayer in this context supplication was used because it's a legal kind of prayer. A man must travel with God to a point where his body becomes prayer. And if you study that scripture, the Bible spoke about them. He said there will be mourning. So they were not even desirous of it because they really loved God. They came to a point where life was no longer moving forward. There was mourning in Jerusalem. There was pain everywhere. So the only place where they could look up to, he said, is to look up to him that was pierced. So they began to ask, how do we advance the kingdom of God to shut down this strange dimension of darkness that is threatening to erode our civilization. So you need to study to understand how does the grace work and how is this released? Because I tell you the truth, hands can be laid on you and you will rise up from there and go back to where you were. Because everything that is imparted to you is a potential. It's a seed. There is something you must do to bring it to life. That thing you do to bring it to life is what is no longer taught in the church. So people look up to men and not unto God. I told you when I gave my heart to Christ, I ran with zeal. I pursued men. If I tell you the people that have laid hands on me, you will be shocked. I pursued men until I began to have understanding that the same Paul that laid hands on Timothy began to instruct him. He said, you must find it to flee. What I deposited in you is a seed. You find it to flee. 
If you don't find it to flame, you will not amount to anything. Say, find it to flame. He said, be strong in the grace that is in our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul transmitted that grace by teaching, by impartation. But he said, you be strong in the grace that you have received from our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, the things that you have received of me, the same commit to faithful witnesses who shall be able to teach others also. But you have to be strong. You cannot be strong except you have understanding. And you have understanding when you practice. Because understanding is different from knowledge. Anything you don't practice, you don't understand. And it's even beyond understanding. You have to gain mastery. So that you can advance the kingdom of God. He said, look up to Abraham. How did Abraham get to that point of mastery? That God in his suffering capacity will make statements like, Will I do a thing and hide it from my servant Abraham? He said, for I know that Abraham will instruct his children in my ways. How does God come to a point where he has so much confidence in a man? You must go through the scriptures and find out how these things worked out. In Genesis chapter 12 verse 1, the Bible said the Lord had spoken unto Abraham. The Lord had spoken unto Abraham. The Lord had spoken unto Abraham. That word is in the past tense. The same way the Lord has spoken to most of you, some of you from 100 level. He says, start a prayer unit. But now you are in 400 level, you have not started. The same way the Lord has spoken to some of you. Leave this, leave that. And for three years, you have not left it. Abraham was like that. The Lord spoke to him when he was in the halls of the Chaldees. If you have studied history, you understand that the totality of civilization began from the horse of the Chaldees. But even in the horse of the Chaldees, the family of Abraham was a family given to sorcery and idol worship. Abraham was tied to darkness. In fact, their trade was selling of idols. They were keepers of demonic heritages. That's why he even understood what it means for a spirit to speak to a man. They were given to idol, people of darkness. They were knitted, they were knitted in idol so deep that they were custodians, they were priests in the service of idol worship. And in that gloom, darkness, God came and spoke to Abraham. And Abraham could not obey the call because his fraternity was stronger with idolatry. Who is this being that is coming from nowhere to instruct me? I understand the voice of the spirits that I worship. Where does this one come from? And God was not benevolent enough to introduce himself to him. He just came and gave him an instruction. In fact, Abraham relaxed. Until through idol worship, through sorcery, through demonic intelligence, his father discerned somehow that God wanted them to go to Canaan. You know, these guys, they understood spiritual patterns they could pick signals in the spirit they know when the hand of success of progress and of wealth is headed in a direction so what his father was pursuing was the glories that was going to be revealed in canaan and he discerned it by demonic intelligence so he carried the whole family he said let's go to canaan meanwhile as they journeyed they now stopped in Haran, and in Haran, his father died it was at that point where the man that abraham looked up to as his role model as a man who was a custodian of the greatest wisdom he knew in his life the man came to a point where life was smuggled out of him and abraham saw the futility of humanity that was when abraham decided to contemplate the possibility of interacting with this voice that has been calling him and that was when abraham carried his journey from Haran and began to go towards canaan he said the lord had spoken he spoke to him in the halls of the Chaldees. In fact, when Stephen was giving the documentary in Acts of the Apostles chapter 7, Stephen told us that it was not in Haran that God spoke to Abraham, that he spoke to Abraham in the halls of the Chaldees. But Abraham took a lot
lot of time to obey. In fact, he even got married before he obeyed. You know, some of you want to get a job before you obey God. Um, first class is my body now. If I know first class. So you sleep in the class, you eat in the class, you bathe in the class because of first class. But when you have pursued and apprehended all of those things, then you will see the vanity in it. Because in it is no life. After Abraham had secured all that he wanted, that was when the call became real to him. And Abraham came back to attend to the call. And then it was at that point where his will was surrendered to Jesus that we now understood the scope of the call. He said, get thee out of thy country. Get thee out of thy kindred. Get thee out of thy father's house. He wanted to separate him from everything that his confidence was hinged upon. Get thee out of thy country. Everything that characterizes the civilization of the world where you are living, separate yourself from it. And don't stop there. Leave this your family that clusters around themselves and keep themselves in darkness. Leave them. Leave your clan. It's a separation of spirit, soul, and body. Because in his country, he was compelled to carry out the services and conform with the civilization that was operational in that realm. In his clan, he was compelled to operate with the ideologies, the philosophies, and the principles that they believed in. And in his family, he was limited. He was tied to a location. So God needed to separate him spirit, soul, and body. And God never spoke about what he wanted to achieve. He only showed him the, the peripheral part of it. In blessing, I will bless you. I will make you the father of many nations. He didn't know the dynamics. That's what some of us see in legal salvation. I am the righteousness of God. I am born in Christ. I'm a new creation. So Abraham was the father of many nations. Abraham was the conduit pipe through which the blessings of God will hit the world. And he, he professed it. He lived it. He was talking it. But this father of many nations had no child. After he confessed it for a while, his circumstances now down on him. He now went back to the one that called him and said, how will I be a father of many nations when I have no child? He said, it is Elias of Damascus that will end up inheriting my heritage. You see, you will confess this legal salvation until a point comes when it downs on you that you are a slave of sin. And the righteousness of God. But you try to live a holy life. It's not possible. You make resolutions. Make resolutions. You say, this month, never again. Some people even go and shout loud. When they are praying, they pray loud because they want to distract themselves of the voice that is in their head. It's not about the loudness. It's about the supply of the spirit. And there is what you do in order to engender the supply of the spirit. Abraham called himself the father of many nations. But he dawned on him that he had no child. That was when he came back to find out. How does this contract work? And God did not speak. Because the man left his country. But he left with Lot. He didn't leave his family. The lust of Egypt was still with him. The lust of the world was still with him. You know that guy who is uh, the prayer coordinator? And then when he carries the microphone, you will see the symbol of a spiritual man. In fact, when everybody is praying, he will compose himself like this. What he's doing is that he's connecting to heaven. Those people, what they are doing is they are doing the hazards. Until he carries the mic, that's when prayers begin. You know, when other people are praying, he'll be walking at the back like this. He's the man of the spirit. Sometimes he moves to one edge and then he will stand like this. I tell the younger believers who say, Kai, it's like this man is seeing visions now. No? He's seeing visions. He's vision. Then when he carries the mic, he will move in a solemn fashion. Sometimes yeah, his bodies, the guy is carrying bodies. He will scream, scream, then he will go down on his voice. <laughs> Fleshly men on, on display. What the people don't know is that what they have just done is that they have subscribed to a demonic reality. Because 
because it was a demon that was inspiring that dimension of pride the moment he gave expression to it is what he did was that he connected himself as a tank a connector a conduit from that altar to the throne of that demon that orchestrated that operation so he thinks he's doing a spiritual thing whereas he's giving demons legality to participate in a service that was supposed to be had abraham wanted to do business with god and he carried lord what are you carrying some of you is gossip you want to do business you are asking for the spirit of grace and supplication and you are carrying gossip you are carrying strife whereas the bible says where strife is there all evil abound all what kingdom do you want to advance the kingdom that is your teacher the kingdom you are an agent of you want to fight it you are the the agent you are the one that gives the demon access into the congregation and then you are saying you need grace to fight it with grace how does it work basic things that people are not taught so we talk about mysteries the mysteries the mysteries we study deep we study deep in fact i'm an instructor in the bible college we study deep but when we meet people we give what is needed if you don't have the knowledge of god all the mysteries you have is a waste because when you have studied for a long time you now realize that mysteries are not apprehended by studying mysteries are apprehended by a man who is a servant in first corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 he said we are the servants of god Therefore, we are stewards of the mysteries of Christ. Mysteries that are governed by the throne of Jesus. People carrying the word. Carrying the word in their pocket, in their heart, in their suit. And they are talking about advancing the kingdom of God. You can't do legal business in the kingdom. Because God will deliberately hide you from the destruction. Because what you don't know is that when you want to advance the kingdom, what happens is that you will stand with the armies of Zion. You will become exposed in the spirit realm. The only covering you have at that time is the degree of your alliance with the authority of God. So if your allegiance is not yet complete, you cannot punish disobedience. So God will deliberately not allow you because you will be exposed. Until Abraham departed from Lot, God did not speak about the kingdom. The moment he did, the Bible said the Lord appeared unto him. The Lord appeared. The moment he did, he said the Lord appeared unto him. Even if grace comes into this hall as a person, only few will see it. Because the first thing you need to do is to first of all, ostracize everything that is of the world from you if not even if he shows up you can't see him because these are not matters that God throws around for everybody they are matters of kingdom legislation they are matters of litigation they are matters of judgment they are matters that borders on life and death separate yourself and the moment Abraham was able to achieve that God began to speak to him and instantly when Abraham entered the land he built an altar so God did not need to descend upon him like a cloud the moment separation was achieved capacity for intercession capacity for prayer became a natural overflow from his being an altar and he called it the house of God you see sometimes we leave the principle and we pursue after realities but realities only operate within the context of the principle what are you tied to what is there that you cannot drop at the feet of Jesus what have you made a God it will be a waste for you to come and cry for the spirit of grace and supplication you must be 
separated. Because kingdom advancement is for reasonable Christians. Christians that have judged that there is no value in life except as they serve the will of the Father. That's why Paul said you should present yourself as a reasonable sacrifice. A living sacrifice. You have become reasonable. I want to show you basics before we go into the complex. Because when we begin to talk about the complex and we don't have understanding of the basic, there might be casualties. Have you not noticed that people die in church because they are walking around the altar? The sons of Aaron, they lit a strange fire on the altar of grace because they think it's grace. And then from the altar of grace, they were consumed. And God said to Aaron, he said, don't cry. If you cry, you will die. And somebody said, uh, that's Old Testament. Paul said, some among us are weak and they sleep. They die because they don't discern the body. They don't discern. You go about a man who has labored for the kingdom. Then you say, all oh, these criminals, this preacher, native, them be. You gossip the authority God has placed upon you. He said they die because they don't discern the body. Because these are matters of kingdom legislation. They are not matters for babes. They die. So we must see the basic before we talk about the complex. It's when you are separated that you are now given an invitation into the presence. Because the spirit is a throne. And in our own dispensation, the spirit is not poured upon us from on high. We are invited into the presence of the spirit. He said, come boldly to the throne of grace. Where you will find help in times of need. In the old context, they couldn't come into the presence. In fact, the decorum that is required to keep you safe is more than the safety measures that is, 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 is observed in a radioactive camp. It is worse than radioactive radiations. In fact, God hid himself from them because he will consume them for their iniquity. But in our own dispensation, he lays us an invitation to come in. He come. And in your journey into the presence, you also ensure you will ensure that those three layers have been handled so you will travel through those three corridors again after they have been purged you will travel into the presence through the three corridors in fact the tabernacle of moses gives expression a pictorial expression into the corridor that you follow to come into the presence from the outer court to the inner court to the holy of holies the outer court is where everybody can participate in there are three things you find in the outer court. You find the gate. The gate has four colors. Purple, scarlet, blue, and white. Those four colors indicate Jesus, the King. Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the Servant. Jesus, the Son of Man. The same way the four Gospels were out outlined. The book of Matthew revealed Jesus as a King. The book of Mark reveals Jesus as a servant. The book of Luke reveals Jesus as a man. And the book of John reveals Jesus as the son of God. Those same colors are the colors that form the gate of the tabernacle. So when you come into the tabernacle, the only basis for which you come is by Jesus. It's not by your own authority. It's by the sacrifice of Jesus. So he said we come by the blood. And the moment you come in, into the altar court, you see the altar of sacrifice. So you bring your gifts. And what happens in the outer court is praise. He said, we come into his court with praise. So in the outer court, everybody can participate. If we carry the mic now and say, let's praise God, all of us will begin to dance. Nobody sleeps when they are praising God. Why? Because that's within the context of your body. It supports your appetite. It's where the whole congregation gather in the outer court. But those who do business, God calls them deeper into the Holy of Holies. As you want to enter into the Holy of Holies, you see the lava. The lava is like a bucket where you wash your hands. 
and then you go in to the presence the holy of holies only the priest go there because that place is not a place to sing and dance it's a place for business it's a place for those who are separated it's a place for those who are willing to advance the kingdom they come to the holy of holies if you come to the holy of holies you see the table of shoe bread you see the, the menorah or the lampstand and then you see the altar of incense it's in the holy of holies that god when you journey with god into the holy of holies then the scriptures begin to open to you light begins to break out because the shoe bread is the body he said as jesus broke the bread their eyes were open and they knew him but it's for those who are willing to come in deeper they come deeper they journey a bit further with god and then god begins to break the revelation as you carry the word you begin to eat the word then suddenly the lampstand begins to lighten your soul lighten your soul the scriptures begin to open to your heart the moment the scriptures begin to open there's one thing you do incense begin to arise from your soul that's where worship begins from you know most time when we carry the mic we say let's worship god and then we begin to sing songs that are emotional and then because people are emotional oh, oh, and then they stir their emotion and then they thought they have worshiped no the reason that song is emotional is because the person who traveled to heaven to trap it he trapped it from the gate of the emotion so if you don't go where he carried the song from you have not worshipped because worship is actually humanity giving way for divinity to find expression that's why when we worship it's not things that come from heaven things lead head to heaven the glory of god that is trapped in you in worship your soul opens so that the glory can ascend from you that's why we say we give you all the glory God is planted within us but in worship what we do is that through humble submission we are opened up so that that which he has put in us we are sent to him but that all happens for those who are separated they come a bit deeper into him that's when you dwell on the word of God you read you study the Bible you chew on the Bible your work with God at that time is not a congregational work it's not about the church anymore it's not about service you don't carry the Bible because you want to go to church. You carry the Bible because you want to look for Jesus in the context of the scriptures. Some people only carry their Bible when they are coming for fellowship. The Bible is not meant, it's not a ticket for fellowship. The way, you know, the way we, we receive tickets to go watch football matches. That's how some people carry the Bible. It's as if the Bible is the ticket for coming into church. And if they don't carry the Bible, well, others are with their Bible, they feel awkward. No. That's not what the Bible is meant for. Every scripture you see is a gate into the spirit realm. Every scripture is a gate. When it's open to you, then you see Jesus through it. When it's open, you see Jesus. Because every scripture is actually talking about Jesus. When Jesus carried them on the way to Emmaus, in Luke chapter 24, verse 44, he said he began to explain to them from Moses, the prophets, that all the scriptures were speaking of him. So from Genesis, the first writing of Moses was Jesus he was talking about. So when you begin to open the scriptures, then God lightens it in your heart and then you begin to see Jesus. It's as you begin to see him that worship ascends from your throne. Ascends from the tablets of your heart. That's when the Holy of Holies opens up. It is the incense that leaves your heart that opens the gate of the Holy of Holies. And until you come into the presence, you can't advance the kingdom. Because kingdom advancement begins from the presence. A point came when Abraham had obeyed God. The more he obeyed God, the more authority he had. God wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And God decided to pass through Abraham. In Genesis chapter 18 verse 1, he said, The Lord appeared to him by the, the coast of the Mambrish. And then Abraham was sitting and then God was passing. This man had grown to a level where he could discern God. Three men were passing and he said, hello, sir. He said, please come in and wash your feet. God wanted to come to him, but he passed as if he was going. That's how some of you come from meeting because you have not come to the Holy of Holies. You don't recognize him when he's passing. I've been to meetings where sometimes everywhere is scattered. But I don't 
see anything happening. At the end of the day, when it's as if the meeting wants to close, then suddenly Jesus walks in very quietly. Then the people that know him, they will just become calm. Even when the meeting is over, they stay there. Even some preachers don't know. When Jesus walks in, that's when they are sharing the grace. Abraham had dwelt in the presence for long. So when God was passing, he was the one that accosted him. He said, come, come. He said, please. He said, no, we are going. He said, please. At least wash your feet. He rushed. He said, kill the lamb. Do this, do that, do that. And he hosted them. And when God was going, God began to speak. How that he was going to actually destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because their iniquity had risen to heaven. Iniquity has a voice. You see, you can come to church and be singing, I love you, Lord. And because you have voice, you, you tickle it. Oh. Meanwhile, you are singing with a microphone, but the iniquity that is crying from you is louder than 10 of the microphones put together. What's crying from your heart? <laughs> you know, that's why sometimes the angels that walk with us, they marvel. They will look at you like this. This person is just coming from the bed of immorality. And then he rub further, tie very modest a tie, and then come to church and carry the distance and begin to say, Holy of Holies. Then the angels that walk with you we jump back first. <laughs> they will look at you like this. How? The pastor that slept through the night comes to the altar and because he wants to wow the people he now said well throughout the night the Lord appeared to me and I was in the place of prayer Oy. what save us sometimes is because the angels are in another dimension so even when they scream you can't hear them even though some of the statements pastors make on the altar when they make the statement you hear oh, the angels will shout in shock and in dismay ah you Oh my Jesus. The spirit realm is a tangible realm, my brothers and sisters. It's more real than this world. You see, this world will pass away. Everything, every civilization that is formed outside of the Holy Ghost will melt by fire. The only thing that will stand are the things that were born in the spirit. That's why our work with God begins in the spirit. It stays in the spirit. It ends in the spirit. Everything you see in the natural is an overflow. When a man of God is coming to preach, his goal is not the move of power. Power is supposed to be an overflow of his intercourse with the Holy Ghost. That's why you don't come to try to stir people, try to coerce people, try to motivate people. No, no, no. Press deeper. As you go deeper, the realm will break out louder. Because the more you press in, the more your heart becomes a gate for immortality to break out. The earth is supposed to be the spectacle of the spirit realm where every spirit comes to manifest their dimension. And the only gate is man. So any spirit you press into its reality breaks out of you naturally. But church has taught us that it's a set of religion, a set of, of, of principles, a set of rules. How you tie your hair, but you don't, they didn't tell you how to tie your soul. But what speaks in the spirit is not your hair, it's your soul. The Bible said, guard your heart with all diligence. Out of it are the issues of life. It didn't say guard your head. You look all modest, but your soul is a gate for demonic oppression. And then you are hoping that you have a future with God. It doesn't even matter if anything is happening through your life. Don't be deceived that people are falling. Don't be deceived that eyes are opening. He said on that day they will say, Lord, Lord, we casted out demons in your name. He will say, away from me, you workers of iniquity. So walking in iniquity can also be in the name of the Lord. Yes. You don't have a connection with him, you are lost. You are supposed to be an ambassador of heaven. You are a pilgrim walking the earth realm from heaven. For Jesus' life, it was so real to him that while Jesus was on earth, he said, the son of man, which is in heaven. Everywhere Jesus came, became heaven. Because he carried the atmosphere. To him, it was not an activity. So he shows up on Sunday. 
They say people are keeping the Sabbath. And then he tells his disciples, oh boy, let's eat corn, hunger, hunger day, hunger day. And then they enter the comfort and they begin to say, Why are you walking on Sunday? You say, ah, the one talking to you is the Lord of the Sabbath. <laughs> fan. I was a football fan. I was deep. My lust was football. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question, please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.